If you're anything like me, you're a professional ichthyologist with a passion for fish taxonomy. No? Oh, you're just like a regular person who clicked on a YouTube video? I can work with that. Okay, so what happened? Well, a new paper was just published and it reclassifies like most of the fish, like tens of thousands of species. Some of this stuff was known before, but a lot of this is like super weird relationships between stuff that seemingly makes no sense. Like take this group for example, okay? The flatfishes. The name's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, they look like this, 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 and this. Wait, hold on. What, what is that? Sorry, one second. Yeah, Jimmy, Jimmy, you put a normal fish in with the flatfish. What do you mean that's a flatfish, Jimmy? Okay, so apparently that's a flatfish too. No, seriously, look, it's right there, polynemidae. It's, it's on the outside, but it's, it's there. I mean, that's why genetics are so important. No person in their right mind would look at this and say, yep, those are related. And then there's stuff that like any normal person would say is related. Like, look at these two. This is the estuary perch, and this is the white perch. Same genus, or at least same family, right? Nope, estuary perch are way out here. And white perch? I, I, don't, I don't even know. I've actually looked at this phylogeny for hours and I can't find them. So I suppose that they don't exist anymore. So say goodbye to white perch. Okay, okay, but let's talk about this group who I like to call the outcasts. You've got the pirate perch, whose butt is on his chin. No, seriously, that, that's his anus right there. Then you've got the trout perch, they do mass vertical migrations every single day, and they live in fresh water. And then there's cavefish. These guys are completely blind and live in caves. They eat crayfish, who are also blind by the way, and survive off of bat poop. Yes, this entire creature is powered by bat poop, and they're all in the same group. Something about this clade is predestined for weirdness. Look how many things went extinct. They probably weren't weird enough to fit in. You know who's weird and didn't care to fit in though? Quillfish. This long, creepy, eel-like thing whose closest living relative looks nothing like it. No, seriously, look, it's on like a taxonomic island. And yet, it's not nearly as unique and insane as Stylophorus cordatus. This thing is absolutely ridiculous, and no other group of fish will touch it with a 10-foot stick. I mean, it's basically its own type of animal at this point. And yet, there's a fish that's even more isolated. Meet the salamander fish. Pretty unassuming, right? Wrong. This thing hasn't even heard of a fish. He has no brothers, sisters, cousins, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. Like, I'm not entirely convinced this thing didn't just spontaneously appear one day. Look at its genetics. Where did it come from and why is everything else so far away? Okay, here's one you guys will like. The big bad pikes. You've got the musculunge, the northern pike, the chain pickerel, the eastern mud min- Wait, what? Wait, no, guys, this family was supposed to be badass. What, what did you do? Speaking of mud minnows, check out this guy. He's the Olympic mud minnow. Super cool. Way over here though, cause why not? Meet Nifon spinosis. Pretty normal looking fish, all things considered. He's actually the closest relative to true perch. We humans suck at common names, and so we call everything a perch. But real perch looks something like this, this, or this. Pretty normal, right? Let's see who their closest relative is. What the fuck is that? What happened? Like, evolutionarily. If God is real, this dude has to be hilarious, because huh? Next up, we have my Survivor Award. This award goes to the fish that is somehow alive despite being surrounded by dead relatives. Coincidentally, this family also wins the worst Latin name to say. Congratulations to the Thalas... Th Thalas Eliotrididae. Thalas Eliotrididae. If everything in your clade is going extinct, maybe you're evolving wrong. Nope, actually I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to revoke that award and give it to this guy. What is this? He exists on a throne of extinct relatives. Honestly, I have to say it's pretty satisfying to look at the synathiforms and have it be confirmed what I've always known. These fish suck. Seahorses and pipefish and their whole group are just not well adapted. And people in my comment section are always like, but they're still surviving, so they must have done something right. No, look at the pile of bodies surrounding them. They're next. Let's talk about the smallest fish in the world, Pytocypris progenetica. Here's one I caught in Malaysia. This is the world's smallest fish species, Pytocypris progenetica. These are fully grown adults, 
right next to my normal sized fingers. Yes, he's, he's full grown. It's insane, right? He's smaller than my fingernail. Well, it turns out that being itty bitty wasn't particularly appealing to most fish because everyone else just kind of let the super dwarf fish do their own thing. Okay, okay, but puffer fish. Everybody knows puffer fish. Everybody likes puffer fish. They puff, they bite, the Japanese consume them in a weird game of poison chicken, but where did they come from? What do their relatives look like? Well, I'm sure right now you're thinking, oh, that AVNJ. He's setting up for another one of those bits where he shows us something that's related but looks surprisingly different. But you're wrong. The relatives of pufferfish are actually pretty reasonable looking. Just kidding, I lied. Goosefish. Okay, you're probably tired now of me talking about stuff that shouldn't be related but is, so let me just quickly give you a few other ones before I move on. Boom, piranhas and catfish. Boom, groupers and duckbill flatheads. Boom, cichlids. Those are common in aquariums, everybody likes those guys. And folidictes. This one's hard for me to even wrap my head around, but it's right there. I just want to give some credit to the original paper. Uh, it's called Phylogenetic Classification of Living and Fossil Ray Fin Fishes, and it's extremely impressive. I mean, just considering the amount of extinct fish that are covered by this paper, I mean, the logistical end of sampling extinct fish, even if you're just doing, you know, physical assessments and not anything genetic, I mean, the cost and the logistics of that are absolutely insane. It's extremely impressive. A study was done by Thomas Neer and Christine Thacker, two very well-known and impressive ichthyologists. But I just want to also point out that this study is not final, and really nothing in taxonomy should ever be considered final. I mean, we're constantly discovering new things. The only reason that some of this stuff is even considered a discovery is because we thought we had figured it out before and well it turns out we were wrong you know you have to have a pre idea that is wrong in order to have a new idea that ends up being correct and that's actually not even to say that the old ideas are wrong i mean they could end up getting reproven it's it's a constantly updating field and that is what is so amazing about science and taxonomy and sad that we don't have a ton of people doing it but hopefully you got an amazing window into how crazy the world of fish are. I mean, they've been around more than any other vertebrate, longer than any other vertebrate, and in that time they've diversified in so many ridiculous and fascinating ways. I'm sure as we continue to discover new fossils we will find some ridiculous things that didn't quite happen that would have been absolutely amazing to see in the modern day, and I'm sure there are still crazy fish yet to evolve that will long outlast us. I hope you enjoyed my nerdy rant about fish taxonomy, and I hope it was interesting even if you're not into, well, fish taxonomy. If you want to see more, I kind of, it's really the only thing that I do on this channel, so I'd love your company. See you next time.